Uh, are there any questions that anybody has before we start our recap? No, I think the am I dead question should come after the recap. <laughs> Probably. Um, so, um, now we shall do the recap. So, basically, uh, last time on The Enemy Within... Uh, y'all were you started your um session at the uh the coach and horses inn where after a few little shenanigans uh due to the um drivers being heavily inebriated you managed to successfully get everybody onto the coach and finally get things underway and begin your journey from uh, outside of Delbers to Altdorf. Uh, however, there were a couple of little hiccups, uh, some good, some bad that came along the way. Uh, Y'all did uh, kind of very much make the acquaintance of P. Lockpocket, uh, who is the halfling that y'all uh, made nice with. But you also had to deal with uh, Lady Isolde, though she did seem somewhat enchanted with Dorth Andril, who performed a wonderful song for the lot of us. Um, but as you were going along the road and you finally kind of got things up and running, you ran into a rather serious incident after you passed another inn, uh, which I believe was the seven spokes inn, which is that, uh, you encountered mutants on the road. Uh, the first of which, uh, you encountered was someone that was recognized by Sigmund, uh, as an old coworker of his, but before any of y'all could really discover much about it the mutant lunged at the carriage which caused the horses to spook and in uh when they panicked they managed to break away from the carriage which caused it to come to an immediate uh stop thankfully the uh the coach driver that was still with it uh managed to pull the emergency brake and prevent y'all from going into a total crash but you did kill um the mutant who was if his name will come back to me where did i put it stefan Melerson. yes stefan stefan yes uh so you fought stefan you killed him uh however you realized that stefan was not alone uh you came around the corner and discovered that there was actually an entire band of mutants a big fight broke out between you and the mutant brigands and y'all did initially absolutely devastate them and you routed them quite heavily however in the aftermath of the initial fight um two of you uh Aseroth and dorthandril pursued the leader of the mutants who managed to escape um and one of his companions was with him which was a, a weird baby-headed large brute with the, that giggled way too much and that creature, unfortunately, uh, turned around to face you to give his boss time to escape. And he managed to successfully cut down Dorthandril and deal a significant amount of damage. And Dorthandril is bleeding quite profusely on the ground right now and is uh, kind of close to death, which is concerning. Um, then, as we were about to wrap up, uh, as Sigmund was wandering around looking at the different bodies... Uh, around uh, where this other carriage seems to have been ambushed and wiped out, he discovered a corpse that has the exact same face as himself. All right. So uh, that is everything that happened afterwards. Um... So, with that in mind, uh, we are going to immediately jump into, uh, we are no longer in initiative order, uh, because we're no longer in combat. Um, Astaroth, Dorothandril is right beside you, and he is bleeding profusely. I've thought about this, so, what I would like to do is I'm going to run over and I'm going to get down right next to him. How big is his wound? Uh, it's it's a pretty solid, uh, like, 
um, diagonal cut down from like the top of his shoulder down to like the top of his stomach. Okay. So top of shoulder to the top. Of... Okay. So I I have my bow that I just purchased um, a couple days ago, um, but I still have my sling from when I first started. I'm assuming my sling is some type of like, like like a kid's um, slingshot, like with the the stretchy um, material that you pull back, and I can, you, you know what I'm trying to say? Ye- I've never yes, used a slingshot. Yeah, it 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 does. Uh, the sling does have kind of like a like a uh, leather type um, thing where you place like you know a little rock in and spin around, hurl it. Yeah, so I am going to take my sling. I'm going to rip that the the part you put the stone bullets in that stretchy leather stuff. I'm going to rip it out. I'm going to stretch it as taut as I can. And we're in the forest. There's tons of trees around. I, if possible, um, could I use an outdoor survival check to see if I can get tree uh, trees wax to coat one side of it? And I'm going to stretch it and I'm going to slap it on as much of that wound as I can. Then, Dwethandrel has a cape, correct? Or some type of robe? Ben? That, um, yes, I have a cloak. Okay, I'm going to rip the hell out of your cloak. I'm going to rip a massive part of your cloak, uh, Dwethandrel's cloak off, and I'm going to pick him up, not pick him up, I'm going to get him up to a sitting position. So I'm, if, uh, that outdoor survival check works and that leather strap stretches and sticks to his wound i'm going to wrap a huge portion of his cloak around the upper part of his torso like underneath his arms and everything to try and control the bleeding is that something that i could do sure so let's let's simplify this a little bit so what what we're gonna do is um by tearing his cloak and by using your um, uh, sling as essentially like an impromptu device to help like really secure it and tighten it down, um, we're going to – I'm going to let you treat that basically as a bandage. Um, so what you're going to do is – do you have the, you don't have the heal skill, right? I do, actually. Oh, you do. Okay, so you can And use... I have a healing drought as well. Okay, the healing drought will hopefully not be useful or uh, needed, but it might. Uh, so what yeah. you're going to do is uh, you're going to roll either a heal check or a flat dexterity. Um, and basically what will happen is if you pass, depending on how much you pass by, um, you will basically um, get rid of the bleed conditions, which is the important part because uh, that will stabilize them. Um, so the, trying to... the bleed is what is at risk of potentially killing him. So that is the that is the immediate um, concern right now. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I'm gonna do a heal check. Would it be challenging? Average? Uh, yes, it will be. It, it will be challenging. I do have. I'm getting up my. Where's my notes here? Ooh, good roll. All right. So, um, well, I was going to dig something up, but that actually won't be necessary now to think about it. Ugh. All right. So, uh, since you rolled so well, uh, let's see. I need to get to page on bandages. Man, I'll tell y'all what, it has been a it has been a busy week in the Warhammer world. My good God. There's been crap releasing left and right. Um where the heck? I know they're in here. Bandages. It's not on the healing page. Ah, here we are. Okay, so a successful heal test removes plus one extra bleed sta- uh, bleed status. Okay. And then when we go to the heal, I just want to double check the wording. But I think you're all good. Um, 
I gotta remember. Here we go. Uh, okay, so you did a successful heal check. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Um, you actually, uh, if you want, you don't actually need to use the bandage. Um, you can if you want. Uh, but uh, with every uh, six extra success level, which you got three, uh, you would have been able to remove up to four bleed conditions. Okay. I'll still keep the bandage on to prevent it from getting infected. Uh, uh -oh. That will not prevent infection, but I, uh, for roleplay reasons, we will keep it. Okay. Oh. Dorothandril will look at you aghast as you patch him up and stop him from dying <laughs> at the shredded hem of his cloak. <laughs> Sorry, friend. It's I had to do it. Your life is more important to me. Uh, Dorothandril, did we already have you roll your... Uh, infection? I do not believe so. Okay, we need to do that now since you have stabilized, which, good job. There was actually a very realistic chance Dorth Andrew was going to be in some serious trouble. <laughs> so, uh, it's Dorth Andrew, of course he God, is. You're uh, making me work on my day off. Let's see, minor <laughs> infection. So, you need to roll oh, me... I know I did, because oh, I did? just scrolled up and okay, there's great. the endurance test. Never mind then. Easily done and done. Alright, so... North Andrew is alive. Oh. Try not to move. It's going to hurt a lot. It's going to hurt for several days. We really need to get you to a town and get you seen by a proper doctor. But for now, just take it easy and lean on us. We'll make sure nothing happens to you. North Andrew will stumble up and look at the axe. How filthy is this axe? You've definitely was stabbed with. You've definitely seen cleaner shovels in your life. Do you, do you really think we could take a manticore? Oh, absolutely, no doubt in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be fine. We got Tal and Sigmar on our side. Not to mention whatever gods that you bring with you. Ah, delightful. I wonder why they abandoned everyone else who found the Manticore. Ah, <laughs> which way did we come from? Just over here. Do you need help? Or are I you good to walk? I can walk. Okay. All right. Um, the two of you we start... Come back. Yep, two of you start making your way back. Um, meanwhile... Um, Thind and Sigmund, um, the two of you are looking at quite the, quite the incident. Uh, there is quite a few corpses scattered around. There's obviously those of the mutants you just killed. You also are able to immediately identify uh, the other coachman is lying uh, quite dead, as are a pair of artisans, and you even spot an initiative Sigmar. And a laborer. Like, it is quite a mess. Uh, if I remember from last session, Astaroth called us into the forest. He did. All right. Pull yourself together, Sigmund. We, ha we gotta help. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'll rush into the forest. All right, you make it about three steps before Dorothandril and uh, uh, Astaroth. Dorothandril, looking extreme, even more pale than usual, uh, come limping out of the forest. All right, lads, he's got a pretty good gash on his chest. Um, I appear to have controlled the bleeding as much as I can for now. Uh, he's definitely going to need to see a doctor. Um, but for now, he's okay. Have you found any survivors? Not that I can tell. Uh, do you know if anyone in the in our cart behind us has has anyone that can help? Maybe you can bring them there. Uh, I suppose we could check, but I don't think uh, three royal women and two drunk carriage drivers might be of any use. But who knows? Uh, uh, perha well, perhaps one of the them guys has who's studying medicine. The nerd. The yes, nerd he does not wish to practice medicine. Though. <laughs> oh. In this case, maybe we can make him practice. Um, 
do we notice the Sigmund lookalike at this point, or... Uh, Sigmund, do you want to draw attention to it? Um, no, he's not trying to hide it, but he's not drawing attention specifically to it. Okay, I'll rephrase that. Uh, do any of you want to investigate the bodies for any reason? Yeah. Okay. I'll go around and look for survivors, or, you know, like, in the carriage, make sure nobody's in there that's at maybe clinging to life or anything like that. Uh, you, you're able to kind of search around a little bit, uh, first coming across the coachman, um, you do, you are able to kind of put a note away in your mind that his sleeved male shirt is still well intact and perhaps could be reappropriated if someone is, uh, willing to take from a corpse. Uh, his blunderbuss is also lying next to his body, but the other bodies are pretty much, uh... A, you could tell they've been looted, uh, likely by one of the mutants um, of any valuables. However, you do uh, make your way over near the side of the road where you find one body uh, with some crossbow bolts sticking out of his back. And upon looking at him, you realize that he looks exactly like Sigmund. Uh, at this point, I'll just... Look at Sigmund, look at the body, look at Sigmund, look at the body. I'll keep doing that for like 45 seconds, just in sheer confusion. Yeah, he's just looking at you like, I don't know <laughs> what to do either. Um, Sigmund, do you have a twin that you have not told us about? Not that I know of. Then this is, without a shred of doubt, some chaos heresy right here this is not this is i just we should burn I am, it, right and yeah we if it wasn't I, raining, we'd just burn it right away yeah <laughs> no i 100 percent. i believe that we sh this is this is chaos this is chaos energy this is chaos magic this is not okay we need to get rid of this do you have any birthmarks on you sigmund any moles on your butt cheeks or something that you is unique to you I don't I know, mean, Sigmund. Do you? I don't have any birthmarks. I've mean, got scars. That, you know, it's, no one else has the same scars, but he's got my scars too. Any scars anywhere abnormal? Like, like he, on so your legs? Or... He looks... He's not completely identical to you in the sense of like scars that you've acquired throughout your life that might be on your, like, your face or neck. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want to actually search him... Uh, to like look at more of his body he has a very he has an unusually uncanny similarity to you like y'all have the same face uh but he's not completely identical there are like you do have various marks and scars from a lifetimes of work um as a guard that this man does not have okay so yeah i do have a couple um head and facial scars that he doesn't have then so are you and giving I, it, are well, you giving him like a solid look over? I'm not if uh Astro I, I to. yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to examine right. this as much as I can cuz it's just sure. very strange. Uh Astro as you're kind of uh kind of like ruffling through his clothes and checking him for any other like m weird potentially giveaway mutations or markers, um you don't find anything on that side of things, but you do see a bloodstained piece of parchment protruding from his jacket okay i'll take the parchment okay what does it want... say uh can you read that's a good question <laughs> um i don't think so if you don't see yeah. read write as a talent no then nope. you have no uh, idea what it says you might you'll have to nope. find someone who can um, Sigmund, you can read, correct? Nope, I believe it's only Dorthandra among us. Ah. Okay, I'll bring it over to Dorthandra. So, do you have the strength to read this right now? Alright. Dorthandra will look and try to find some cover from the rain. Alright, uh, I will... The rain has lightened up a fair bit, but I will, uh, show you this. And we will assume that Dorth, if Dorth Angel wishes, he may read it out loud, in which case you may all read it. Uh, 
that is awful. And if y'all need me to read it about, <laughs> read it out for you because of the handwriting or whatever, that's fine. <laughs> no, no, this. Oh boy, this is the legal documents. Messrs. Lock, Stock, and Barrel. Civil lawyers, commissioners for oaths, etc. Gartenway, Guggenhofen. Dear Herr Lieberlung, after many lengthy researches, oh, they messed up there, they capitalized researches. <laughs> Quality lawyers there. We have come to believe that you, emphasis, are the only living capital R relative of one Baron Lieberung, late of the town, at least they didn't add the end, an E at the end of town, of Ubersreich. This being the case, again, extraneous capitalization, and any other heretofore unknown and pertinent factors notwithstanding, I am herewith charged to inform you that you are the sole beneficiary of the late baronet's last will and testament, hereafter referred to as the party of the first part, as well as the entail of his estate and all lands and estates attached thereunto. I, the undersigned, acting in my capacity as legal executor of this aforementioned document of the party of the first part, do here, therefore, urge you to make your way... Oh, they do know how to spell a lowercase y. Nice. With all convenient speed to my offices at the address superscribed to this letter. Thereupon, and upon, your production of a signed and twofold witness affidavit confirming your identity as Castor Eliasus Liberon, we shall be pleased to place unto your hands the title deeds to Liberon Manor and all attached lands and estates and bequeath and the sum bequeathed, the bequeathed sum, ah, that's particularly bloody there, of 20,000 gold crowns imperial. I remain your most humble and respectful servant. Ah, he makes a lot of squibbles with lots of letters at the end. Signed this tenth day of Nar Hexen, in the 2,512th year of the Empire. I'll and turn you... to Sigmund and say, do you know any of the names that he just read off? Does any of that sound familiar to you? No. <laughs> I... No, and... But, uh... He really, really does look a lot like me, doesn't he? Uh... By the way, you did also find this in one of his inside pockets. It is not bloody, unlike the other letter. Uh, it appears to be uh, when Dorothy Andrel gets a look at it. Um, to Dorothy Andrel, it is. Uh, it appears to be some sort of affidavit with a collection of signatures assuring that the one who possesses this letter is, in fact, Caster Lieberung. Oh, are you certain, Sigmund, you've never say... Had someone think you were somewhere before? Because there's a bunch of signatures here saying, Oh yes, this is Castor Eliusis Liberung. Yes. Um, and, and they're all from Nuln. That is the deceased guy's name, right? He, yeah. he is Castor... Okay. That is correct. That's, he yeah. is Er Liberung. I assume that you don't know Ingrid Zichman. Priestess of the Temple of Sigmar in Nuln. Um. Or Oscar Helmut, Guildmaster of the Guild of Merchants of Nuln. In do, your. Do you have. Um, do you have Lord Local or anything for Nuln, Sigmund? Uh, I just have Reichland. 
Um, okay, just roll me a average intelligence check. Okay. Oh, yeah, you recognize all of these names um, from your time in the watch. Like you dealt with your fair share of like bigwigs and priests and priestesses. And like you didn't have a close or even really any functional relationship with any of these people. But you know of them like you've seen them before. I mean, yeah, I've seen them around town, but it's not like I had know them or their families well the fact that these letters are addressed to someone that is not you makes me feel a little better it's not as if somebody was running around pretending to be you to try and claim this fortune it, ju it just gets really weird because I don't think I've told you all this the first one we saw the mutant he used to he used to be my friend on the watch in Nolm. What? Really? Yeah, that, that's Stefan. Do you recognize any of the other mutants? Were they anyone that you knew as well? No. Just Stefan back there. That's why I froze up. I mean, I'll... By, by the gods, what is... Perhaps he was converted to a mutant shortly before our arrival? Because if this... If this carriage was containing some people from Numb, maybe it's not possible that he was with them? And somehow became a mutant? Um, I don't know... I don't know how feasible that, like, realistic that is. I don't know how long it takes to become a mutant, but... Depends on if the gods are blessing you or cursing you. Uh, yeah, th no, that's that's a very realistic. Uh, your character would have no idea how mutants function. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> to, to know I, that I have no idea. Would be so. heretical. <laughs> but per perhaps something had happened, and he turned into a mutant, and that's why the carriage crashed. And perhaps the looters just happened to be in the area. I, I don't know, but it is very strange that two people from Nome are both here deceased at the same time. Oh, it's it's still very strange that this gentleman resembles you in more ways than one. But as I said, the fact that it is addressed to someone other than you, maybe it is just a horrible coincidence that this particular person happens to look like you. Maybe your mother got around a little bit. I've got a shoulder. Sure. <laughs> I'm sorry, Astaroth. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> nothing, nothing. <laughs> If I were a dwarf, they'd be going in a book. So, an important question. Um, do any of you have any interest in... There are a couple of notable little things lying around. Um, y'all have looted some bodies before. Doesn't mean you always have to, though. Or always should. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Ask rather than above it. If, it. if it seems like it's a family thing, like a family, family heirloom or something, like... The only, I'm not gonna... that, the only things that seem of value that you've spotted um, are that both of the coach drivers that are dead, um, one who's right here next to the coach and one who was further back, um, the only thin saw the one further back. So whether or not he chooses to share this information with y'all is up to him. But both of them were wearing armor that uh, could very easily be repurposed uh it would probably almost assuredly fit the human sized individuals in your party or could be taken by the non humans and adjusted the next time y'all are out of town with the Smith. Um, and there is of course a blunderbuss lying next to, um, this coach driver who is by what is left of his coach. Would I know the laws about carrying a fire on like a blunderbuss? Yeah, that's fine. Nobody cares. Okay. Uh, the the empire is too reckless and dangerous of a place for anyone to bother uh, questioning whether or not you have the wisdom or intelligence to be wielding a weapon like that. And there certainly right. are not legal licenses for them. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know if they're like relegated to like only military. No. Compared to them. 
Well, I think for now, so many unanswered questions. I don't know how you feel about it, Sigmund, but I think this is just a horrible coincidence. Now that I've seen the body and it doesn't exactly re resemble you, and all the documentation has no mention of your name, perhaps it is just a coincidence that this gentleman looks like you. Um, yeah. We are heading south, you know, towards Althorf. Perhaps our travels will take us towards Nome. If we head in that direction, we can bring this documentation to this gentleman and let him know that um, Pastor is deceased. For now... I mean, that's 20,000 crowns. And he kind of looks like me. And an estate. Don't forget the estate in Bogenhofen. Are you suggesting that as a lawful man of the Empire and a servant of Melm that you are considering going to this man's office and pretending to be pastor? I mean, I'm not a, I'm not above it. <laughs> I'm just confirming with you, my good sir. That is what you are suggesting. It's merely a suggestion that is a lot of money and yeah. an entire house. Hi, you you do what you believe is right. Um that is also an option. Either yeah. way, I think we should press on and just make sure there's nothing here that we can use because the dead don't need their the dead don't need what they have. If I'm, I'm uh, well, not gonna about this. Yeah. I'm on the coach huh? drive in the back. What was that then? I'm uh, I'm already I, I I didn't hear your conversation. I'm checking on the coach driver in the back. Uh, okay. uh, uh our, the one the one coach. the one way back here. Uh, yeah, the one that you said I saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you wander over to him, uh, he's super dead. Uh, but uh, he does have a what the heck was he wearing? Uh. But... Uh oh, I was on the wrong page. He has a sleeved mail shirt. So both both of the coachmen are wearing sleeved mail shirts if you want to claim them. Mm -hmm. uh, can I also check the horses? Uh yes. If you mean the horses. So to be clear, these coachmen and these horses were the ones that were with this coach, not y'all's coach. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, they're it, they're and all they're, dead, all, right? they're all super dead. Well, actually, one of the horses is um, that was being like feasted upon by the mutants is what is technically probably still alive, only just barely. Um, if one of y'all wants to do the the merciful thing and put it out of its misery, that would, you know, you can. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. So I I had no idea. I would have done that the moment I knew. Yeah, well, okay, we'll it. just we'll just uh, I uh, yes, yeah, okay. <laughs> it is. Right. It, it, it was it was taken care of. Yeah, okay. So, you know, the horses are all super dead. Um, all the people are super dead. Everybody's dead. Okay. No survivors. Nothing looks perfect. There are no um, survivors. Fend, are you going to share the information about the coach drivers? Or are you keeping that to yourself? Uh, yeah, no, no. I point them out. Hey, um, um, more over here. And I'll go over to Fend and look and say, oh, okay. And, um,. GM, as as a hunter in primarily like uh, outdoorsy um, range combat, would the chain mail suit me, or is that more for? Hey, armor is armor. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't it would it affect my like dexterity and stuff too much? You do think or no? The so the only no? time that wearing armor becomes a problem. Um, so there there are specific little rules for it. Uh, basically, if you are wearing, um, male armor, if I recall correctly, I don't think it really gives you much of a penalty, but let me double check. Uh, let's see. Uh, where is the armor page? Oh, I'm on the wrong page. That would be why. Uh, let's see. So, male armor has the flexible 
quantity, which is not important for this. So there, there are no penalties to wearing mail armor. Okay. Um, if you wear a mail, um, wait, that doesn't sound right. Armor. Let's see. Pop, pop, pop. I think it's at the bottom of the armor list where the asterisks for mail and plate are. Ah, yes. Uh, yes. If you are wearing mail or plate armor, uh, you do get a minus 10 to all future stealth checks while you're wearing it. Obviously, you could take it off. Yeah. But it does. Um, prov it would provide you... Uh, so a sleeved mail shirt uh, provides a... I believe it is just for your body. But or no, if it's a sleeved mail shirt, it would be body and arms, I believe. Um, so that would give you two armor on your chest and body, and it can go over leather armor. Um, I'm gonna turn to the so there's, there's two of these, right? Yes, there's, there's two, two uh, and they are for the average human build, which is both federal fit. Which I'm gonna be I'm gonna be merciful to you guys and not make you roll on the the chart for armor this one time. <laughs> this is the <laughs> only time that's gonna happen though. Um Dothandril, then Sigmund. There's two sets of sleeved mail here. Does anybody want them? The dead don't need them. Uh, Dothandril's gonna look at the coach and see if the coaching line has his markings on it. Uh, yes, they appear to have been from, um, oh gosh, uh, not y'all, the one y'all are associated with. They are, they were from the, uh, the, uh, um, Four Seasons. They're coachmen from the Four Seasons Coaching Company, well, which is. certain the Four Seasons would want it back. <laughs> yeah, you guess, but they're also good luck finding where they're supposed to send it. You might Astaroth. be able, you might be able to get like a reward for it though, perhaps if you were to return it to them. Yeah, uh, chainmail's a bit too looks a bit too big for me. It could uh, be no, repurposed. What are you looking over there? Yeah, re repurposing it would not be difficult, especially if you go to Altdorf. You could have a smith adjust it quite easily, and it would be significantly cheaper than buying a new one. Mm -hmm. Sigmund, do you want one? I have a bit of armor, but if no one's going to take one of them, I won't leave them here. <laughs> okay, so that's so Sigmund's taking one. Uh Bend, I, I absolutely do not mind giving this to you if you want it. I am content with how I am now, and I'm sure somewhere down the line I can purchase some if I need some. Well, Dorothy so Fandel needs it, so he stops getting beat up in fights. <laughs> oh, no. Apparently all uh. I need is more cloaks to <laughs> my wounds. I'll take it then. Okay. Alright. Perfect. So, Thin, um, add a sleeved mail coat into your inventory. Uh, the encumbrance for it is going to be two for those of you that are taking it. Uh, Astroth, if you, w or sorry, Sigmund, if you, wait, gosh darn it. Who was it that was talking earlier? I think it was Sigmund. Um, you can, whoever is taking it, human, <laughs> can put it on immediately <laughs> if you would like. Okay. And it's two, and it's body, you said? Uh, body and arms. Okay. Because it is sleeved. Sweet. I can see the blunderbuss, right? Uh, yes, you can. Um, I'm going to turn to Thend and say, would you like the blunderbuss as well? Um, that'd be... I don't know how much of a marksman I am yet. Maybe uh, one of you can hold on. I think you need on. to be a particular marksman to use a blunderbuss, but that is uh, that is that is a that is a fair assertion. <laughs> well, you can hold on to it in case of emergencies. I already have this. Oh, I scratch that! Should... The the chainmail sleeve chainmail is going to be 
or the sleeve nail shirts are going to be three encumbrance, three encumbrance not two. Okay. Heavy. Yes, they are. Though, there, do remember that the encumbrance goes down by one if you are wearing it. So, that's, so they're two because I'm, I'm wearing mine. Correct. Now, are you sure, then? Do you know how fond of uh, black powder weapons dwarves can be? And I, I personally don't have a use for it. I have my bow. I have my sword. Well, uh, not, not myself as much, but... Uh, I, will no note, I will note for anyone that is wanting to think about it that when it comes to firing a blunderbuss, uh, the way it works, uh, let's see, blunderbuss is that it has the, uh, see the blunderbuss. It has it, it, a, you can't always sell it. B, mm -hmm. Um, firing it, uh, basically the, it, it is not the easiest thing to fire. Um, <laughs> uh, if you have no experience with black powder whatsoever, you would just be using your flat ballistic skill. Um, and basically, uh, it, I don't think it has a special rule. I think it's just a general, um, yeah. So if you don't have the black powder shooting rule, uh, it basically just is a dangerous weapon to fire. Um, but, you know, if you hit somebody with it, it will hurt. And there is shot next to it. Not only enough for to reload it and fire it again once, um, but you could always take it and sell it. Blunderbusses are worth a fair chunk of change. Yeah. Sigmund, do you want it? You're from Nulm. Yeah, wasn't really trained in... Them, but yeah, I, I at least know how to make sure I don't blow my hand off. Yeah, right, th then you take it. And if you want to sell, if we want to sell it later on, that's fine. Uh, I just really don't. I don't have a use for it, and I don't want to carry it <laughs> unless I absolutely have to. But if you would like the weapon, by all means, you may you may take it. It would definitely, I believe, be good to have in case of an emergency. But. Uh, and Mr. Sigmund, the blunderbuss has an encumbrance of one if you're carrying it on your person. Is there anything else uh, that we can see or anything inside the carriage? Like, if I no. climb up and open the door and go inside uh, and stuff? And... Uh, the door has already been uh, thrown open, and when you look inside, you can see somebody was already very busy at work ensuring it was picked clean. But as you're doing that, uh, the five, four of you, uh, hear uh, the sound of horses galloping very quickly and um, out of uh, around a bend out of the, the light rain and a little bit of fog comes riding four uh, horsemen oh no oops I am on the wrong there we go Uh, and riding up upon you is a band of road wardens who come galloping up and they are, uh, charging in. All of them have their weapons drawn and one man in the front, uh, who looks notably more stately than the rest, uh, is definitely leading the charge and I will put up his image for you. And you hear him shout, HALT THERE! Ah, good. Finally, Lady Isolde will want to know why you're late. By yeah. her mark, but thank uh, you for arriving so swiftly. I I will kind of put myself right here and just put my hands and go, Whoa, 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 hold on a minute. We are not bandits. We are not bandits. Just take a minute. Look at the ground. Look at the mutants. Uh... He will sort of uh, uh, look around the scene and uh, he turns and nods to the four men behind him who immediately kind of uh, spread out on their steeds, um, examining the situation and kind of surrounding you uh, before he rides up to you, Astaroth, uh, and he says, what happened here? I'll say, hello, my name is Astaroth. Um... So we are on another coach down the road. We were with a Miss Lady Azul. Uh, we were attacked by a mutant. Our horses were dislodged from the carriage and ran off. 
Uh, we fought the mutant, and afterwards we came around the corner of this road, and there were these. There was five of them, correct? GM, five mutants. In total, yes. And we and we only killed four. So then, uh, so that there was five more mutants, uh, pillaging through this carriage. We fought off then killed four of them, and one of them got away. And as you can see, there are four corpses of mutants here. And we, this just happened, I mean, within the last 20 minutes that this occurred. So we were just collecting ourselves and making sure everyone was okay. But it doesn't appear that there's any survivors in this coach. Uh, he kind of uh, looks around a little bit, frowning. Before he uh, uh, whistles and uh, gestures for two of the riders to go further down the road, which uh, they do galloping off. And uh, he gets off his horse and nods uh, to each of you. And he says, my name is uh, Magnus, Sergeant Magnus. And he kind of uh, walks over and he kicks at one of the uh, mutants, the large dog-headed one, before nodding satisfactorily and uh, turning over back to the coach. And he says, all right, then, let's get to work. And he gestures at the two other road wardens who get off their steeds. And he turns to the four of you and he says, you four, help me uh, help them write this card up. It's blocking the road. You got it. You got it, Sergeant. Uh, just be advised that Elf is wounded, so he really shouldn't be doing any manual labor. But myself, Sigmund, and Then the dwarf will will lend our hands. Dorothan will go to help lift the coach. All right, and uh, give Astroth a look. <laughs> Dorothan, I know, I know you want to help, but I really just would take it easy, my friend. You don't want to reopen that that. Uh, uh, those... oh, no, it is quite firmly bandaged with my cloak. My <laughs> fine cloak. Uh, the, the the sergeant will uh, uh, scowl at a lot of you and say, that's enough talking. If All he right. could stand, he could help. Okay, okay then. Right. Help uh, with the cart. Between the lot of you, it's, it's fairly easy work. Uh, you get the carriage uh, righted, and it is standing up once more, no longer blocking the road. Uh, and he, uh, he turns, uh, to the lot of you. He says, you said your horses ran off. Go see if you could find them in the direction they ran. They usually don't go too far. This, these places in the woods, horses aren't terribly keen on getting eaten if they wander off too far. I can handle that. Um, should I roll like a track for that? <sighs> um, only uh, so if you go over to where the horses ran into the forest uh, and head off in that direction, um, I know. We, we will see how difficult it is from there. Okay. They ran off from. Um... They basically went straight this way. Yeah, right here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you do see the. As you uh, make your way over there, you do see the other two. Um, Road wardens are speaking with the various uh, individuals from your carriage and are kind of assessing the damage and uh, uh, nodding as they are speaking with all the folks that you've gotten to know at the Coach and Horses Inn. Um, Thin, what are you up to? Uh, I think I would like to tag along with Astaroth. Okay. Uh, the sergeant, I will say at this point, the sergeant does uh, j uh, shout at uh, two of the um, mm -mm -mm, road wardens. He shouts at, you hear him say, um, Baldwin, Suna, help me start getting these corpses into this carriage. Any of those around you have nothing better to do, you can help. And they start kind of two of them at a time pick up a body, move it over to the carriage and basically throw it in the place where, uh, uh throw it, uh, on top where normally there would be, um, baggage and such, but everything has been th either thrown into the road or taken. So they're using it for corpse storage now. Yeah. Sigmund will help starting with, uh, Kastner's body and going to carry him face down. Okay. 
Uh, Dorthandril, what are you up to? Dorthandril is also going to slowly pick up a body, drag it towards the coach. All right. Thind and Asroth, uh, you make your way into the forest, and you actually don't have to go very far uh, before you hear the distinct sound of uh, of the horses, and you actually see them grazing um, uh, a short way from you. They are not too far away. However, uh, you do notice that like their ears are still pinned back, and uh, they're they're all still kind of attached to one another. Um, so they are exuding very much a nervous energy. Okay. Um, could I use charm animal to try and slowly walk up to them and calm them down? You may. To be. I assist. Uh oh! Do you also have charm animal? I do. Uh, sorry, I'll rephrase that. You are, are you trained in Charm Animal? I think so. So do you have at least one advancement in it? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, so um, I would recommend whichever of you has the higher stat. Uh, but Astroth, you volunteered, so we'll go ahead and make you do it this time. Um, so you're going to roll a Charm Animal check. When it asks you for the difficulty, it's going to be challenging. But when it asks you for um, any modifiers, you're just going to add a 10 which represents uh, the dwarf helping you out. Was it a uh, target bonus or SL for that? Uh, target bonus. Or, uh, yes, target bonus is going to be plus 10. Okay. SL is more for, like, talents. That doesn't seem right. Oh, wait. No, that's definitely not right. What? If you put a plus, oh, plus yeah. 10, it messes up the... Yeah, you don't hit plus 10, you just, just 10. Oh, okay. Sorry. No, uh, you want good. me to re-roll that? Or? No, no. What is your what is your charm animal level? It is a thirty-five. Okay, so you you passed. All right, so you're able to approach and uh, you know you make little make little woo whoa horse whoa horse sounds and you kind of approach and between you and Thend you come around two sides. So even if they get a little skittish and they kind of start heading one direction, um, one of you is there to kind of immediately get them to be like, oh, there's another person there. And eventually you get them calm enough that they're, they finally relax and they chill and are like, okay, the danger is past. And you are able to uh, grab the harness um, and you can now control them without issue. Come on, guys. And I'll pull on the harness. Are any of them hurt or uh, are they all? No, they seem fine. Okay. All right, then you grab one side. I'll grab the other and let's bring these boys back. All right, uh, you make your way uh, back to the road, and by the time you all arrive, uh, all of the corpses, uh, mutant, human, and otherwise, actually, sorry, no, they leave the mutants. Um, Non-mutants uh, <laughs> are uh, uh, stacked up in the other one. The mutant bodies are literally just thrown onto the road, uh, or uh, into the forest, because not their problem. Um, so, uh, unless any of you wants to specifically do anything otherwise, uh, uh, Sergeant Flaster has it where you split the horses up. So two of the horses are hitched up to the, uh, coach that's full of corpses. And the other one, is, the other two are hitched up to y'all's original one. And with the Sergeant's help, they enact enough repairs, uh, to get it functioning. And he tells y'all to go back to your coach, and the the road wardens will guide you all to the next inn. Appreciate the guides. Thank you. Does anybody else need to do anything, or are we? Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. That was uh, quite odd. Let me just get all my crap back up. All right, chat. If y'all can see me, give me, give me, give me, or hear me rather, give me a sign. <laughs> By the way, Antisti, how how was your uh, stream back? Pretty good. 
What'd you What'd you do? Uh, I I just played some campaign basically. Cool. I made a I made a mod. You or, made a mod. No, I ported a mod. I ported a mod over oh, from okay. Warhammer. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm learning. That's more than I know how to do, by a lot. <laughs> it's it's sort of weird. It's it's kind of. It's like it's it's easier than you would expect, but there's a lot you have to learn. What was the mod? Uh, what's it? Uh, the, this is total war. Like declare war on everyone. You know the oh, usual. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's, that just makes it easier. So y'all can hear me good. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, uh, is everybody back? I'm back. I'm here. Is yeah. Ben here? Not yet. Okay, we will wait for Ben. Uh yeah that that was weird yeah like whole power went out I went downstairs looked around couldn't find anything and all of a sudden it came back on so <laughs> gotta, gotta love that Texas power grid yeah well I mean for us uh where I'm at losing power is extremely rare so I'm assuming that the only thing I could think is maybe um oh god I don't even know um like they're doing a lot of construction well, in the area so they might have like turned it off or turned off like a a power line for, for just a moment to do something or who knows what I'm back okay great so uh, we shall continue alright so uh, before the power went out <laughs> alright so uh, before the power went out <laughs> um, the you all had loaded up into the your carriage uh where Dorothandril when you enter Lady Azold gasps uh as an Anna kind of uh covers her mouth as you manage to pull your way back inside why did my OBS just disconnect uh, can y'all still hear me I can hear you now, yeah you cut out for like a second there you came okay. back talking about being gagged out <laughs> Okay. Someone putting putting their hands over somebody's mouth. Okay, hold. Oh, 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 God. Okay. Let me try that. What in the devil is happening? Whatever. Y'all can still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. OBS is being a bitch, but so I'm just not going to stream the remaining parts of the stream. That's fine. Uh, We'll just, I'll just record it and then it'll go up on the channel and people can deal with that. All right. Okay. So, um, uh, Lady Azold covers her mouth uh, as you enter back into the uh, carriage door, Thandril, and she goes, "Oh, what happened? You look terrible." I made the mistake of charging someone with an axe. I am not likely to do it again. Uh, uh, Marie uh, just sort of nods uh, and looks, and she says. I'm glad to see you survived. Unfortunately, my cloak did not. <laughs> she shrugs yep. and says, you can always get a new one. Exactly. Uh, Dorothan will not comment, but his face will give off that he highly doubts he will find an elven cloak <laughs> anytime soon. Yeah. Um... So, going to alter. who knows? Uh, who, which, which of you ride on the outside? Uh, I know Thind rides on the outside, and mm, Sigmund does. Actually, wait, no, y'all put Thind inside, and then Astroth and Sigmund are on the outside. Yeah, because yeah, the, the carriage drivers were two riding. drunks. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, uh, as you two are on the outside, um, uh, uh, as you're climbing back up on top of the carriage so that y'all can continue. Uh, P, uh, kind of, uh, her head sort of pops up. She goes, oh, thank Esmeralda, you're safe. I was terribly right, we're worried. Safe. Yeah, everyone's good. Dorth Andrew got a little bit of a whack, but he'll be fine once we get him some proper care. Oh, that's so good, dearies. Uh, well, let's hope there's no more excitement until we, uh, arrive at somewhere safe, eh? Yeah, oh, I could do without any more excitement for the rest of the day, quite frankly. I know we've got some road wardens to hopefully ensure yeah. that. Uh, you are profusely thanked 
by the way, by the uh, the coach drivers, especially for bringing the horses back, um, that they were uh, Gunnar and Holtz were definitely uh, extremely worried, um, but so, are highly appreciative. So I'll I'll walk up to both of them and smile and and shake both their hands and say, "Oh, you're you're welcome," and then I'll just look at both of them and say, "Refund." <laughs> They both, uh, 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 Holtz d looks at you and he goes, well, we still get I, you, we're still getting you where you're going. So <laughs> I think we've earned more than enough for a free ride or done more than enough for a free ride. Wouldn't you say, uh, Gunner holds up his hands diplomatically and says, why don't we discuss it when we've arrived somewhere more civilized? We shall. All right, all right. You make y'all are off. Uh, it does not take long, um, and you do not, thankfully, run into any more issues uh, on your way to the next den. Uh, right. Eventually, North Endel's passing out because he has three fatigued conditions. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. Uh, it's not long before you arrive at the end of the seven spokes. And we will transition back to, where is it? This map. So you continue to uh, make your way towards Altdorf and you arrive at the end of the seven spokes, uh, which is extremely similar uh, to the coach and horses uh, in as you pull in, you can see that it is quite a crowded place. Uh, there is three other coaches already staying there for the evening. Uh, so there is a significant amount of clientele, uh, just lots of people drinking and talking and having a reasonably okay time. But uh, in the meantime, um, when you arrive, the Roadborns do not let y'all go in immediately. They actually uh, have the, the, the two coaches you're on pulled over to a different little section uh, to park before they both come out. Uh, and Sergeant Flaster uh, motions for you all to join him. And he says, I need to take statements from what happened uh, from you regarding what happened. Okay. Of course. Oops. Yeah, that's completely understandable. All right. And we'll kind of uh, cast fill in uh, for this section. But y'all each relay your stories about what occurred. Uh, and uh, they nod and kind of do that. And then all of the bodies are basically late, taken out of that other carriage and are uh, laid out so that the uh, they can all be uh, left there until a wandering priest of more um which is often called a doomsayer arrives to basically perform the blessings of more on them and then uh you know shunt them off into the nearest grave um that being said one thing that one of you kind of notices is that there is no uh attempt to especially for you sigmund being a city guard they're do they don't ask y'all any questions about who these people are. They don't make any attempt to search them for like identifying markers. Um, they just are, they basically lie them out on the ground, get them into a reasonable pose, kind of throw a sheet over them and are done. Okay. Uh, however, when they pull out Caster's corpse uh, and lay him on the ground, what uh the uh one of the road wardens uh a man with a uh impressive uh uh kind of walrus mustache looks at him and then he looks at you uh sigmund and then he looks back at him and he looks at you and he kind of just nods and goes sorry about your family mate terrible luck that yeah didn't even realize he was coming up uh he's trying to surprise me <laughs> he just sort of nods and says terrible times terrible times uh, and they <laughs> throw a sheet over him uh, alright with that so, if y'all wish you can speak with the uh, 
with them uh with the road ones if you'd like or you can head in they don't seem to be terribly interested in keeping you further yeah i just uh, check with the sergeant and say uh are we free to go do you need anything else from us uh he will uh shake his head and say no you've done enough and uh i'm not going to impose on you further not that you'd necessarily be useful any further, but do do your best to stay out of trouble any further on the roads. We will. Thank you for the escort. Uh, he nods, though he does kind of pause for a moment before turning to you and he goes, Before I go, I don't suppose you've seen a woman that has a complexion similar to mine. A, a doctor named Anita, by chance, have you? Uh, yes. Yeah. No, she, we um... Her in, uh, we met her in middle, Middenheim, right? Yeah. No, no, no. Y'all are yeah. thinking of uh, a different uh, doctor no. with a similar name. No, Dr. Juliana. Yeah, y'all uh, think of Dr. Juliana. Juliana, Anita. Okay, so, okay sorry. Yeah. Um, That's where my... And, uh, can't say we no. have. Yeah. We've met another doctor similar description uh he shakes his head and says no i'm never mind it doesn't involve you and uh he he just sort of gives you a nod and uh gets back on his horse uh to go well no he doesn't get back on it he grabs it by the reins to go stable it are you sure i mean if we if you want to tell us more if we ever find this woman or come across her path i mean we could be sure to send a message or let you know somewhere, you know. Uh, roll a easy gossip check or a uh, easy charm check. Okay. Uh, he pauses for a moment and he just sort of turns and goes, "It, she's family. She's my sister, my younger sister. I would." I've heard that she might be making her way down from Middenheim, and I would very much like to ensure that she is safe. So if you do happen to see her, please tell her that her brother uh, is looking for her. Or in the last place she was seen was Middenheim, you said? Uh, he, uh, he will say, no, she was on her way from Mindheim back to Altdorf, which she should not be doing with how dangerous the roads are right now. There have been rumors okay. of a manticore attacking people on the road. We've come across a few of the victims were on its trailer itself, actually. His eyes do narrow at this, and he turns to face you, and he says, You've seen the beast. Just its handiwork. He nods, uh, frowning. Um... And uh, you you do see that instead of making his way for the stables, he instead beelines for the other four, four road wardens. But he does give you a dismissive nod. Okay. Let's go find some place to lay down. Yeah, let's let's find Dothandril some some proper care. <laughs> I highly doubt proper care can be found here, though. I guess that does explain why his patrol was out so late. I mean, he's looking for a doctor. He's, there could be others on the road. What if it was Ju Dr. Juliana, the woman we met in Middenheim? What if she was just using a fake name? Then... I we, will uh... note that her complexion was much more of, like, kind of like that... Um, Malayan? Yeah, like, more, more of, like, an auburn or... Um, type complexion whereas sergeant flasher is notably darker skinned okay okay um yeah could be though could be so we did what we could to help her yeah did everything we possibly could all right do y'all uh so y'all make your way into the end and it is bustling um do you want to go right up to the counter to talk about rooms or drinks do you want to listen around to what people are talking about uh you do see lady is old and her crew um uh already uh speaking with uh some individuals at another table they kind of seem to already be off kind of in their own world uh you do 
kind of get a glance um, from Lady Isolde, though she doesn't deign to acknowledge y'all's existence. Uh, her handmaiden, though, and Marie both do give you a polite nod. I'll go up to the counter and find um, whoever is currently running the counter. All right. Uh, as you approach the counter uh, and you are trying to get the attention of the barkeep who is busy servicing drinks and dealing with uh, it, it's crowded. Um, you do uh, find yourself next to a woman who is uh, drinking and uh, just enjoying an alcoholic beverage. And uh, as you two kind of jostle arms, uh, she turns to look at you a little bit and when you get a good look at her, you have a sneaking suspicion you might know who this person may be. Do I? She looks very similar to someone you were just speaking to. In complexion, oh. I should say. Oh, oh. Jeez, okay, that was quick. <laughs> um, I'll turn... Uh... Am I supposed to see the inside of the bar, by the way? Because I can only see the no. map. No, there's, there's no map for it. Just use your imagination. Okay, no, not not a problem. Um, <laughs> Pretend so it's I'll like turn a tabletop her... role-playing game. <laughs> <laughs> I'll turn to her and say, you wouldn't happen to be the Dr. Anita, would you? Um, she she She's frowning uh, the moment you start talking to her, but she does raise an eyebrow uh, at you. Uh, and she simply nods and she goes, yes, I am. What can I do for you? Um, I'm sorry to bother you, but do you have a brother who's a road warden in this section of the Drakwald? At that mention, uh, she immediately heavily rolls her eyes and she goes, ha, huh, I, I see you've had the displeasure. Uh, yes, uh, we encountered some mutants on our way here and we had slain them and your brother and his squad uh, rolled up at the end they escorted us to safety here um, ah, how... and he was saying he was looking for you yes i'm sure he is so he can waste both his time and mine trying to coddle me like the idiot he is always <laughs> arriving late and being completely useless i don't need his help oh i doubt you do but I just wanted to let you know, since he had requested um, that if we ever did come across you, um, to let you know that he was looking for you. He's yeah, here outside currently. Is outside, yeah. Uh, she, yeah. She's going to turn and frown and say, I would be quite... Uh, uh, she, she, she looks and says, I would be much obliged if you could ensure then that he finds a reason not to come in here i would very much prefer not to see my brother duly noted and i'm sorry to make your acquaintance on such uh, unpleasant means but perhaps i have something else that could pique your interest a doctor have you ever worked on an l <laughs> dorothanko is glaring uh, i am not an amusement piece she turns and looks uh and she uh she does raise both of her eyebrows she goes no but you look you're about 10 steps away from uh from basically being only good for stuffed and put out on display i'm surprised you're standing you are good at not falling over <clears throat> she uh, uh nods and stands up and she uh uh gestures to the where all the rooms are laid out she goes come on i'll take a look at it thank you doctor I, we really appreciate it uh she nods and uh goes well if you appreciate it perhaps find a way to convince my brother that staying the night at the seven spokes is not a good use of his time <laughs> I, i'll see what we can do uh, and, uh, she will gesture for you to follow her, Dorothandril. Dorothandril will follow her. All right. It is surprising the amount of doctors you find on the road. Uh, <laughs> she turns back frowning and she says, well, I'm the only one that I've encountered. How many have you found? Uh, well, there's one of the members on the wagon 
or the coach we came in on, he's studying. He seems very against act doing actual work, though. Uh, she she scowls at this and says, "Well, that doesn't sound like a doctor, then. That sounds like a uh, a typical academic afraid to get their hands dirty and perform actual tasks, helping people." Likely looking just for a way to improve his study so he can be another useless cog in the machine of this empire. <laughs> Darth Vader will nod. I do believe so. I mean, how much can one know about leeches? Uh, she, uh, she just, she just shakes her head and she says, um... I don't suppose you caught which book about leeches he was reading. Uh, um, yes, Dorothy Thunder will give the use of leeches monologue. Uh, she will shake her head further and she says, terrible book, doesn't even have any actual ap proper application for leech fare. They can be useful in very limited circumstances, but not using drivel like that. He's not going to pass any classes reading that book. It's a useless tome. Dorothy will not. It did not have anything about boats. Uh, okay, so she is going to go ahead and perform a heal check on you once you get to her room. Um, actually, I will do that after this next bit. Uh, real quick, Thind, what are you up to? Uh, mm, I think I'm mostly just grabbing food all right you're gonna grab uh some food and drink mm -hmm. Is did it, uh, i i actually can i ask around about can i can i do a gossip check you may ask around about the manticore and people sightings around here uh you absolutely may um also uh you do find that uh your food and drink has been very generously covered uh by gunner and Holtz. oh and they they each uh, raise a uh tankard from where they are already getting on to their second drinks and the table they have found uh <laughs> am i with darth Andrew or that uh, was it just a doctor and darth Andrew that went in uh i don't know did you go with them or not uh, I wasn't planning. I, I didn't think I did. I just wasn't sure. I actually not. got up to step away for a second. So, No, I would assume. Uh, you, I, would, I was going to assume you were still at the bar. Oh, how much did we pay per person for the coach ride? And I know, I, I think we initially convinced them to drop the price down or something. Uh, Y'all did I, manage to convince them to do a discount, I believe. Let's see. I have it written here. Y'all. It was five shillings total. Yes. Four. I mean, oh, they've probably already spent it all on alcohol by now. Yeah, I I will turn to Thend and say, "Well, the gesture's nice. I do believe we paid for seats on a coach that was supposed to escort us and ensure our safety to a specific we, destination. Is that correct? We, we did get a discount because we said we would help. That was specifically oh. why we got the discount in the first place." That is true. Ah, but I think we helped a little more. What'd you say, Maybe. Ben? I'm pretty sure we already... I don't think any ill-doing was done. Uh, we got a discount for our protection of the of the coach. Mm -hmm. They provide a similar service at future taverns. Basically, like, they're yeah. paying us back. I, I will grumble in a way that Fend is all too familiar with. And say, uh, you know, I, I guess you're right. I feel like we did a little bit more than help as they were completely inebriated and unable to perform their duties. And we slew four mutants. But alas, you know, the two of you are right. I'll leave the matter alone. Ugh. I'm not happy about it, though. <laughs> If you wanna, if you wanna go try and haggle those men, by all means. Uh, uh as y'all are talking, uh, you do see uh Sergeant Flasher and his four road wardens uh enter the inn 
and uh, they start looking for uh, a table themselves. Uh, oh, uh, when Thind, roll me a average gossip check. Oh, uh, let's see. I think I'm still sick. Uh, I I'm believe so. Uh, minus 10. Oh. <laughs> Um, all right, so you ask around and, uh, you are, uh, as you're asking people around the Manticore, um, one of, uh, the only thing that you're really able to get from people is that, uh, let's see. Ah, one of them says, well, I don't know uh, if this is related, but I'm pretty sure it is. But I heard that over in the village of Tufelfir, not far from here, a witch hunter discovered a cult. There was a bunch of people there who were worshipping the Manticore. They were in cahoots with demons, and they're the reason the Manticore has come down upon us. The witch hunter burned them all at the stake the entire village burned into ashes thanks sigma maybe with that that damned creature will bother off i'll i'll just i'll just nod nod respectfully and uh and and move on <laughs> well that I, would confirm uh, our suspicions that it perhaps was touched by chaos if that story is true. Yeah, I'll I'll spread I'll spread the word. <laughs> I feel like I th Thind probably feels that's like a pretty big if, but yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, um I am going to try and go back to the doctor to let her know that her brother is here and maybe she doesn't want to leave the room when she's done. Okay, uh, you enter just as she has managed to get the makeshift bandage off of Dorthandril's chest and expose the pretty gnarly wound beneath it. Uh, and she is tutting. And as you talk, she holds up a hand and snaps it closed, giving you a shush gesture um, and says, if it's not important, get out. I'm working. Just quickly say, your brother's here. When you're done, don't leave. <laughs> Uh, she looks notably irritated, and, uh, Elf, you can see her hands flexing and unflexing in, in, uh, uh, visible annoyance. And I will take my leave. <laughs> Alright, she is going to go ahead and perform a heal check. Okay. Uh, let's see. She does treat you with actual bandages that are uh, actually fresh and nice. Uh, and also have... Uh, she applies a, a, a poultice to it. So with that, she gives you... And see, she also has surgery and field dressing. Uh, let's see. All right, so you are going to heal four plus her relevant uh, stat, which is, I'm going to say it's intelligence. Yes. That would make sense to me. I always have to double check because I always get this wrong on my witch hunter. Uh, yes, okay. So you are going to heal five. You're going to heal nine wounds. Thank you very much. Dorthandle is going to hold the shredded bit of torn off cloak up to his the edge of his his cloak and consider whether or not this can be saved. Uh, <laughs> she's going to hold out her palm expectantly. She says that'll be four shillings. Dorothander will consider, look at his chest. How good are the bandages? 
they're tight and clean which is more than you can say for the vast majority of jobs you've seen in your lifetime hmm. Dorothan will pause and say oh I do not have shillings on me but can you break a crown that I can All right, then Dorothan will give her a crown all right, she will drop it into a uh, purse she has, and she fishes around and eventually produces uh, 16 silver and gives it back to you. Dorothan will take it, put it into the ouch, and ask her, are you headed towards, what was it the halfling called it? The Schaffenfest. Uh, her nose will wrinkle and say, so that I can deal with a bunch of drunk idiots for an entire week. No, I am heading towards Altdorf. Uh, I'm on my way home from the Collegium uh, Theologica in Middenheim. I have studies and actual important work to attend to. Dorothander will, will nod in understanding. You've been in, Did you ever get to see the Holy Flame of Ulrich? I've seen it a few times. Could you describe it to me if you do not mind? I've tried to visit, see it when I was visiting, but apparently they decided it was too holy to see. Uh, she kind of squints her eyes a little bit, kind of like thinking back. And she says, well, it's, it's strange. It's like, it is a great fire. Like someone has put up a pyre with lots of uh, wood stacked beneath, but it burns... Uh, seemingly on little, if nothing at all, and it's blue. Blue and kind of tinges to a white at the the edges when it flares, and and it's cold. Cold? That is peculiar. Must have been a sight, then. Such tends to be the thing with holy relics. Don't make much time for them myself, though. Oh, I find some of them interesting, like that hand in Delbert's. Uh, she scoffs immediately and she says, oh, I don't want to hear about the bloody hand. Thunder will give her a sympathetic look. Oh dear, did you get the spiel too? It's impossible to get anywhere near Delbert's without getting a spiel. Especially when they want to collect donations for it. Dorthorn will give a nod and stand up. Well, I th I'm glad I found your services before getting into Altdorf. Uh, she pats her coin purse and says, As am I. If any of your other friends need tending, tell them to come on by. I will. I'm going to go find out how much it's going to cost me for food and drink. Uh, it is covered, thanks to your coach drivers. That is surprising, but I'll grab some food and find the rest of the group. <laughs> all right. What's the squad up to? I didn't know they paid for all of us. I thought they paid just for Than's food, but... No, they paid for all of you. Oh, okay, then... Then in, in, in your head, a simple a simple calculation will note that that is still less than a single piece of silver, but at least it's not nothing. Yeah, no, exactly. Like just between the discount and that gesture, I guess I'm a little more content. Um, I would like to just peruse around if possible, and do a gossip check check and see what I can find. Yeah, go for it. Anything about manicure manicure sightings or the like. Uh, roll me a average gossip check. Because people are drinking and they're having a great time. Ooh, okay. Um. <laughs> you here. Let's see. Ah, as you are wandering around talking. Uh, to people, you overhear a conversation uh, between a number of individuals who look more akin to uh, off-duty state troopers. Uh, so perhaps some sort of 
um, either they're on their way to an assignment or maybe they're road wardens that are off the clock or what have you. Uh, uh -huh. And um, an older man says, Ah, oh, well, you know what they've been saying about the Altdorf Zoo? It's been shut for weeks. I was going to take my lads there, but couldn't. They're not letting anybody in. I heard that Deathclaw, the Emperor's Griffin, went on a rampage. Probably because the Emperor hasn't hasn't been deceived to him for months. Won't even ride the creature out to go deal with that damn manticore they said was seen not too far outside the city. Surely the Emperor of all people could have dealt with it with that damn griffin of his. Otherwise, what's the point? Huh. That's really interesting. Uh, okay. I'll make my way back um, to the rest of the group and kind of... But I just overheard a couple gentlemen talking about the Althorf Zoo. And that... Um, the Emperor's personal mount, the, the Griffin, I guess went on a rampage. And he brought up a pretty good point. Uh, I guess the uh, supposedly to this gentleman said that the Emperor hasn't been to the Griffin in months. So whether the Emperor is out on a campaign or other business, I don't know. Uh, but the Emperor could easily deal with this Griffin if it's causing that much trouble. But it doesn't seem to have reached the Emperor's radar. Just a food for thought. They aren't paying something I, goes bad yeah. and the Emperor's killed by a Manticore. What'd you say, Simon? I mean, there's always the chance things go bad in a fight and something uh, happens. Suddenly, Emperor's dead. <laughs> Ye of little thing. <laughs> yeah, I I do believe our Emperor is more than capable, especially with Deathclaw at his side, to um, take on a Manticore. I understand what you're saying, but I I believe he is faced to worse things. Northend will raise his head from the table and look at Sigmund. Yawn. Sigmund. Yes. Did you just consider the Manticore uh, capable of defeating your mighty Emperor with his holy hammer? I said All there the while chance. certain that we and he will look around, noticing the giant absence of the Ogre of Doom. You have no trouble achieving this. I'm saying that in combat there's always a chance something can go badly. <laughs> For us or the Manticore. He's like, I refuse to concede. <laughs> 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 the doctor who will make sure that Magnus is not in ear or hearing range can look at your head if there's problems you're having though I understand the fee is steep she also couched that invitation to all of you I appreciate it I think I'm okay Anybody want to get healed? Uh, I'm not missing any wounds. Then you good? Yeah, I'm good. All right. All set. Um. Anything else y'all want to do when you're in here? You've eaten. You've had stuff to drink. You're. You can already see your coachmen are getting absolutely wasted again. P. Lockpocket is wandering around, uh, performing little jigs and telling jokes and doing little tricks, and you can already see that she is. There is a very steady flow of money going into her already swollen purse. Nobody is there anybody selling anything? No, not really. Uh unless you're just oh. wanting more drinks. Yeah, no. Um I'll turn to the groom and say, Well, if there's nothing else to do, I'm gonna retire for the night. Yeah, we should we should at least be sober and rested if our coachmen aren't going to be. Yeah. <laughs> They I'm will sure we'll have some not be. <laughs> I'm sure we'll have some repeat of today, tomorrow. I wonder if we could pay off the barman to water down their drinks. I think we should consider that the next tavern there are several cups in already. All right, gentlemen. Do, See I you mean, in the morning. Do, does one of y'all want to try watering down their drinks? Uh, I'll well, 
Life's image, aren't they too far gone? Or... Yeah, they're, I they're, mean... they're probably only like two or three in. Like, they're, oh, they're oh. getting ramped up, but they're not like gone yet. Yeah, no, then absolutely. All right. I thought they were sloshed. Uh, whoever is going to attempt it, what are you going to say to the barman? And uh, what skill would you like to try and use? Um, you could use bribery. You could use charm. You could use intimidation. But, you know, do think of the potential consequences should you fail. I set to a couple road wardens around. I would like to use charm if no one else wants to spearhead it. Okay. And what are you going to say to the barkeep once you get his attention? I've got a couple extra silver for you. If you could just um, water down those gentlemen's drinks just so in the morning we can actually have some sober coachmen. Sober enough. We were waylaid yesterday. Some of it based off their incompetence. All right. Uh, you make your plea uh, to the barkeep, which is who is a uh, he's a very like almost uh, suspiciously thin man. He's wiry, though, uh, with a with a very carefully taken care of and waxed um, handlebar mustache. Um, and he and twirls the right side of his mustache as he's listening to your proposal. And you can keep charging them full price. Um, is bribery a basic skill? Uh, yes. Okay, because you are actually trying to bribe him, um, I'm going to have you use bribery instead of charm. If you don't want to use money, we'll go for charm. But this really sounds like a bribery, so we'll use bribery. Okay. Um, however, can I assist him with that? Uh, do you have at least one advancement in bribery? No. Okay. Yeah, no, you're... Uh, but I'd like to... it will be an easy bribery check. Okay, then I'll go bribery. Actually, wait, how much money did you offer him? Uh, I said a couple silver. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, he, he holds out, uh, he holds out his hand, uh, uh, against the bar so that, uh, no one, he's trying to kind of like discreetly, uh, no, I've, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how much silver are you giving him? Just two? Uh, I give him three. Three. Okay. Uh, he, he takes the three silver and pockets them and he, he, he gives you, he gives you a knowing nod and he says, I'll take care of it. Appreciated. All right. For those of you staying tonight, um, is, is there anyone who does not want to stay in the common room? So, does anyone want a private room? Um, I think North Andrew should have a private room, and I will, I will buy him a private. Room. Okay, it's so t it's rest. ten shillings for a private room. They're pretty busy. Mm. Well, does anyone so want to split only, the cost with me? It's only 10 dosh or 10 brass pennies for a night in the common room. Or you can sleep for free out in the stables. Anyone want to split the cost with me for private room for him so he can rest? Sure. With How big are the private rooms? Could we all... You could, you could easily all? fit two people comfortably in a private room. That's I'll so go in uh, silver. Okay, yeah, so um, me and Thend will go half and half, and Thend, you can stay with Dothendril. Me and Sigmund can, will stay in the common room. Um, unless uh, Sigmund has any objections to that. No. Okay, so make sure y'all deduct that from your money, and then from Sigmund and Astaroth, I do need y'all to also make sure you pay 10 brass for your yeah. night in the common room. Hand over silver, get back two brass. Okay. Am I deducting? How much? How much uh, brass was it for the? It's ten brass room, for sorry. a common room. Okay. How much for the for the fancy yeah. room? Uh, the fancy room is ten total, but uh, Astaroth is 
uh, ferreting up five. So there's still five that needs to be paid off. All right. Uh, how much is one gold split? Uh, one gold is 20 silver shillings. So you would get 15 silver back. Mm-hmm. All right. Done. All right. Uh, unless anyone else wants to do anything, uh, it is time to rest. So we go to this screen and we go through. It is now the, tw it is now, uh, Angstag of Yardrung, the 23rd. And then back. All right. You uh, all sleep well. Um, if there's anyone missing wounds, please roll me a, I believe it is an average endurance check. Um, my current is 13. My max is 17. So I somehow lost four. I don't know if I took a hit from that mutant. I don't remember taking a hit because I'm pretty sure I just clobbered him, but... Yeah, you might have taken a slight bonk from somebody. Yeah. Um, so you want me to roll an endurance? Yep, average endurance. Did that come out of the controls tab under combat, or is that out of the main tab? No, that's out of the main tab. Okay. And uh, thinned also reduce your sickness by a day. Oof. Uh, so you just don't heal any wounds. Okay. I also reduce my sickness. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Uh, so. All right. In the morning, uh, as you all get up and make your way into the inn, um, you can all grab breakfast here if you would like. Uh, it's pretty cheap. Uh, it's only four brass uh, per person. Uh, you do notice uh, Lady Isolde, um, Jana, her um, handmaiden, and Marie already leaving out the door. And they are not with your coachman, but they are leaving with a different pair of coachmen. Huh. Okay. We could this is along. understandable. Yeah. Uh, we could potentially try and squeeze in um, i will note you have already paid for journey to yeah. altdorf um if you wish to try and get your way onto another uh coach uh because your coachman as you know will probably be a little problematic um it will cost you more money i say we save our cash yeah i'm not too far Keen on spending uh, more money. We're already upon the journey, so I say we just continue on. All right. I'm just quiet. We can basically all just be in the carriage. Who's going to take yeah. from us? Yeah, that, that is three less people, so y'all can now fit everyone in the carriage. I think we can even have uh, P with us. If yes, you can. To. All right. Wasn't she already in the coach too? Didn't she already no, pay for the? No, she she's rode on top. top. She was uh, just. Oh, I, was... I meant like in our coach in general. Didn't she already pay her way? Just oh like yeah, we did, she or... did. But we mean that everyone okay. can actually be in it now instead of okay, on it. Okay. Perfect. is <laughs> <laughs> gonna take out the rash, some of the rations we have, and eat that. Okay. Hey, he save money where you can. This will last. Uh. All right. Um, everyone who is paying for breakfast, make sure you do. I'm doing that right now. Uh, it was four, right? Three. Three. Wait, did I oh, say four? You, you said four. four. Okay, four. Never mind, four. Okay. <laughs> you said uh, three. <laughs> I mean, I heard two. Mm hmm. Nice try. <laughs> you, you missed your chance. You missed your chance. Um. All right. Uh, I'm going to choose to ride with them again like i did before just in case more trouble arises so i can be outside and, and get a, a get a jump on it that's fine and, um however currently it is morning and they are nowhere to be found oh god damn it 
Again. Well, let's go get them. Right. Let's split up and look for them, I guess. All right, gang. They're not hard to find. Uh, they had to sleep in the common room uh, with everyone else uh, because they spent way too much of their money on drinks and not enough did not save enough to make sure they have a private room. However, <laughs> you notice uh, uh, upon uh, getting over, stomping over to them, that uh, they are significantly easier to awaken this time compared to last time. And after just a small amount of grumbling, they pretty much get to their feet and seem relatively fine. All right then. Uh, they they do uh, grumble uh, and mutter a little bit, but eventually they make their way out into the room and they eat breakfast. And then it's not long before you are all back on the road. And they snap the reins and you're off. You travel down the road, uh, heading through the Drakwald, and you do pass a couple of uh, various uh, colorful wagons heading opposite direction. Uh, you do actually see a cavalry regiment um, belonging to a knightly order that none of you recognize, because I don't think any of you have lore heraldry, uh, who ride past. And you see the occasional groups of wagons or hunters or uh, individuals traveling the road. And you do pass by a fair number of coaches zipping the other way. But other than that, it's a pretty uneventful uh, time. And after a few hours, at long last, you see uh, the immense shadows of large man-made towers. Um uh gleaming ahead and before you know it you have emerged out of the drakwald and you have arrived at altdorf the capital of the empire yeah let's go woo does it look better than middenheim yes significantly so does it look better than what they did in War, Total War Warhammer 3? <laughs> Probably. Oh. Um, all right. You uh, make your way towards the city proper, and there are no issues, surprisingly, getting into uh, the city itself. You're able to make your way in. Uh, I do need to check. Does anybody... Um, Real quick, just because I want to ask this. Does anybody have the um, sixth, sense, sixth Sense talent? I know Rarit uh, used to have it. Nope, I do not. Dorth Angel, nope. you don't, correct? Nope. Okay, great. Just making sure. All right. I just see magic. All right, you make your way towards and into the city proper. You can see the Imperial Palace and all of its majesty uh, standing high above the rest of the city as it is up on uh, a larger hill and is also just a dominating structure. Uh, and as you get into the city proper, it is bustling. There is people everywhere. You can see nobles mixed with peasantry, mixed with laborers, mixed with artisans, mixed with anyone, any and all kinds of folks you can see uh it is just bustling and you've actually arrived at a reasonable time um of day i should say so luckily things are bumping and there's a lot going on but uh, as you pull in past the uh, city gates proper and uh you make your way uh in a bit um, you, the coach only goes a little ways in the city before Gunnar and Holtz pull it to a stop and, uh, Holtz shouts, we've arrived. Faster than expected too. I look at, uh, Astaroth. Sorry, right, I had a mouthful of food. <laughs> Uh, so it would seem. I do believe in the end we made some decent time. 
Yeah, it's a it's a little bit it's a little ways into the afternoon, so you've only got like a few hours before dusk. Yeah, but at least we're not late. Uh, any recommendations on the place to stay? Uh, they shrug and they say, "We're not too far from the Conix plots. Just keep heading there, and you'll find plenty of places." Uh, as y'all are talking, uh, Ernst, the uh, nerdy little weirdo with his leeches book, uh, oh, yeah. gets off and uh, sort of just glares sheepishly at the lot of you before he just gives a very awkward little half bow. Uh, oh, and oh he... Ernst. Yes? Suggestion from a doctor I met. That is not a very good book on leeches, she said. Perhaps another one would be more useful. Uh, he looks down at the book and he looks back up at you and he kind of, it, he almost like you catch the hint of a scowl, but it almost, then it just kind of like subtly shifts into just kind of a, like he just purses his lips a little bit and he goes, ah, well, duly noted. Thank you. I admire your fortitude. Apparently I hear it is very, very boring. Ah, yes. Well. Such are the sacrifices we make for academia. Dorthan will give him a nod. He's a strange kid, uh, but he eventually, he finally kind of just wanders off and melts into the crowds. And uh, P. Lop Pocket uh, steps out and goes, Oh, well, that was quite an adventure, wasn't it, lads? Yes, let's not have it happen again. I do hope you boys, I do hope you boys will make your way to the Schaffenfest. I'd hate to think that this is the last time I'll encounter ye, but it tends to be a small world, so I'm sure we'll meet again. Perhaps. Sure, we it will. And... If you do make it over to Bogenhafen for the festival, uh, do be sure to come and find me. I'll be out there performing. It's in Bogenhofen. Yes, dearie. Dorothan will give Sigmund a look. Yeah, I was just looking at the letter like, oh, that's uh, right on our way. It should be a marvelous event. There will be games and prizes, and it's also the biggest auctioneering for uh, livestock in the entirety of the Empire. They raise off they don't charge taxes, you see. Uh, I think you'll be seeing us there. Don't you worry. It was a pleasure to meet you. Good. Well, travel safe, dearies. I need to go find some of mine. And she uh, she does a uh, elaborate curtsy and then goes jogging off into the milling masses of Altdorf. Well, last time I checked my coin purse. Uh, <laughs> everything that should be there is there. Okay. Um, oh. real quick, Can, uh, before we go any further, how is everybody doing time-wise? I I'm good. I'm good as well. Uh, ben, I got maybe like twenty, thirty more minutes. Perfect. Uh, Ben, how much longer you got? I have time. Okay, cool. Let's keep going then. All right. Uh, Y'all have arrived in Altdorf. Uh, the coachman snapped the reins and they're off heading back towards the gates. Um, they did give you advice to head to the Conig plots, which you are not far from. It's basically like this. You can kind of think of it as like the central square. Mm-hmm. Is that where y'all want to go? Or do you want to go wander and look for something? Uh, I'll, I'll sort of look to the party in a more hushed tone. So what's the what's the plan going to be for grabbing this manticore? Well, I don't think we came off, here for to party. No, no, we certainly didn't. And just based off of what P said about the festival of Bogenhofen, with the manticore attacks getting more and more uh, I guess daring is the word to use. The fact that there's going to be 
the largest selling of livestock around at this festival, I can only imagine um, that the Manticore is going to catch wind of the scent of many, many farm animals. And it's going to be prime real estate for that Manticore to come in. So I, I think that we should head to the, the festival because I believe that there's a good chance that that's going to be where the Manticore pops up next. Does anybody disagree? No, and if even if it doesn't show up, there'll be people from um, uh, these parts that all might have seen it. I have a better idea of where it's heading. Was there anything that we had to do here? Like, did anybody have anything specifically in Altor? Uh, we could definitely find a smith for Then's armor. Oh, uh, yeah. I do need to leave a message with some of my kin. Maybe a new cloak for Darth Andrel. Might, uh, might be worth sticking around Altdorf for just at least a little bit. Oh, no, absolutely. I was just curious to see if if anybody had anything specific. So we got the armor, message to family. So. We can we can ask around, but I'm a bit skeptical on the... From, from, from what I feel, it seems like this Manticore doesn't enjoy large gatherings. It avoids larger cities. Until yeah. now. It's not as big as a place like this, of course. Yeah. I can't imagine the Manticore would waltz into Altdorf, but as we'd seen earlier, at, um, I think it was Stogenhofen, um, the Manticore blew up on the rampart wall and wrecked, wreaked havoc on the, uh, the garrison that was there. So if Bogenhofen is a town of similar size, odds are at this point, the Manticore feeding more and more is going to start attacking larger, larger cities. Well, are there any other similar towns nearby? Will shrug. <laughs> I don't know. How big is Bogenhofen? Do we even know where it is? Would I, um, would me and Sigmund know <laughs> having Lower Reichland? Uh, sorry, what was the question? Uh, would me and Sigmund know where Bogenhofen is in relation to you with Lower Reichland? Uh, since y'all are trained in Lower Reichland, yes. You know that Bogenhofen, um, y'all will basically, um, want to either by boat, uh, follow the, uh, River Reich, uh, east, or there are, there are roads, uh, you can take out of the Southern and Eastern gates that can take you that direction. Boat would definitely be the fastest. We can take a boat or a hand roll. Oh, that would be delightful. We ride the River Reich all the way up east until we hit Bogenhofen. Sail. You ride a horse. You <laughs> sail a boat. My apologies. Didn't have many boats uh, growing up where I grew up, so I'm not familiar with the terminology. I was truly your that. misfortune. Who knows? Maybe Dothendril might find some of his kin here who have their own ship or boat and can convince them to give us a ride. <laughs> oh. yes, let's ferry on the Ma oh. Maybe. All right, so what's the plan? Well, I'll split off and look for a blacksmith. So let's find some place to sleep for the night so that we yeah. can meet back up. And, and I don't think it's wise to split up um, in such a large city. And there are nefarious parts of Altdorf, just like any city. I think we should stick together. Well, are we looking for somewhere cheap then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, where's where? It well, I, I yeah, look we around can head toward a, a slightly more one down in near the edge of the city. We could head towards um, what was the name of the area the coach drivers recommended? Conix plots should have the, the Conix plot. Know where a decent and not overly expensive inn or tavern is. Yeah, why don't we head there and see what we can find. All right. 
so y'all begin to head into the Conex Plaza. And the real thing that starts to um, be noticeable to the lot of you is just how many damn people are in this city. Altdorf is monstrous. It is a gigantic place that dwarfs any and all other pretenders uh, to mass civilization that you've ever seen. The walls stretch seemingly as far as the horizon in many places, and there are just thousands of people teeming in the streets. And one thing that you can't help but notice is that there is a lot of hustle and bustle. Everyone just seems like they're constantly in a rush getting everywhere. Everyone almost has like a practically panicked expression on their face, trying to push through the crowds and move with them and get where they're going as quickly as possible. It, it seems very restless. You pass by numerous corners uh, on streets with town criers, and you hear one of them shouting, Here and here, words out that famous philanthropist Rolf Utenbaum found to be a heretic and hanged. Meanwhile, you pass another street and hear a different crier shouting out, Hear, hear that the a new heir to the Rickard Golner estates have been found. A penniless beggar in the streets. The long forgotten son of a nobleman. You also pass by numerous people who are handing out pamphlets or holding up signs. Some of them have things proclaiming that doom is upon us and the end times are coming. Uh, that uh, the Sigmar has looked down on his people and found them wanting and the end is nigh. Others are talking about and screaming about how Altdorf has become uh, full of corruption and oversaturated by the rich and the fat. And there needs to be a new order, a change, how things need to be better for the common man. You have others shouting about how, no, no, it's the new merchant class that's the problem. All of these rich, greedy individuals who are taking advantage of those beneath their station and kissing the ass of the nobles so that they can maintain a position of setting the classes against one another to focus on outside issues instead of the internal flaws here in Altdorf. And change is needed. You hear a lot of people arguing and yelling about how things need to be different in Altdorf. That being said, as you are uh, continuing to move around, uh, every once in a while you have to move aside as coachmen come barreling through, snapping whips at anyone that uh, is too slow to get out of the way. You see stray animals running around, dogs barking at each other or snarling. Uh, you see dwarfs haggling in the street uh, with uh, human other human merchants arguing over prices and the argument seems uh, quite heated. You even spot the occasional elves uh, kind of more floating than walking uh, among the crowds. Uh, their noses upturned and seemingly trying to do their best to ignore everyone around them. Really, anything and everything you can see seems to be visible. But as you're making your way around, uh, you do arrive uh, at the Conic Plaza plots proper which is near the top of a, a very large street known as the Street of a Hundred Taverns, which is really the perfect place uh, to seek out food or a place to stay, especially cheaply. As you get off, as you arrive on the street, uh, you do immediately start getting hassled by people standing outside of the various doors. There's one man who points at the lot of you and he says, come, come to Angelino's, come. We have the best grub in town. Meanwhile, there's a guy just down a little bit from him and says, no, no, you must come to the cat and the fiddle. We have the finest music and the best beds. And they are constantly arguing with one another, but in your direction, which is vaguely annoying. As you try to pass deeper down the street, though, uh, suddenly loud trumpets ring out. You hear the blast of music uh, as a large marching column comes parading down the street and people start 
swarming to the side uh, to not get trampled uh, as a gleaming regiment of soldiers covered head to toe in proud full armor and mounted on uh, um, and just gleaming come marching down the street carrying various banners that identify them as the legendary Reichlin first also known as the Imperial Guard. And behind them... Wait, do I not have the... Uh oh, hold on. Where is it? Oh no, where's my... Hold on. I need to very very briefly <laughs> grab grab a thing un momento <laughs> always oh my gosh i can't believe i don't have this slotted okay hold on just a second uh Let's see. Oh, it's at the top. Uh, okay, let me go here. Go here. There's a piece of art that's supposed to be available right at this exact moment, and it is not for some reason. So I have to grab it because y'all need to be able to see this because it's cool. While you do that, bend. Mm -hmm. I noticed you can read. Do you happen to have anything to write with? You seem uh, to have had a decent position. Let's see. I don't think so. No? Why would I need to write? Reports. Fines. Uh, I wish... I wish I'd be at that stage, but... No, I just... I just reported to... To my boss. Ah, the reading just came as, uh... Good, good to get the job, really. Is all. a while though why uh were you looking to write uh, a letter or something I had thought it may be quicker to write a letter mm. but I will gesture with my mop and bucket I don't really have the implements <laughs> the uh well we could uh we could find something. Can't be too expensive to find a quill. Dorothandra will uh, make a very non-committal sound about the inexpensiveness of writing equipment. Okay, sorry. So, uh, behind <laughs> the Reichland first, uh, this uh, foot regiment of um, uh, Reichsguard, you see this. The Emperor himself, Karl Franz, square of jaw and proud in his full Gromro black armor, mounted on a magnificent ebony steed barded in gold, riding behind the phalanx. And it is a full parade. Behind him march ranks of knights in full ceremonial regalia. Um, rose petals are being thrown into the air and from buildings. And it is a full parade and people in the crowd start cheering uh, uh, vigorously as the emperor himself is in the city among the common folk I will immediately drop to my uh, to one day not an uncommon sight yeah uh, do we see uh, any other notable figures in the crowd in the parade not that you would recognize. Okay. 
I'm sorry the Emperor isn't enough for you, apparently. <laughs> Pikmin just in the back. I thought he'd be taller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, his armor's nice, but where's the hammer? Helmet. He doesn't need no the helmet. helmet. He wants you to see his face. <laughs> uh, that being said, uh, the Emperor and his uh, little parade do pass by uh, at, a, at a respectable but prompt speed. And it's not long before they, uh, the entire parade finally passes by and heads much, much, much further down the street and business kind of resumes and everyone swarms back into the space that was left behind and everything continues. I never thought I would see the day I would actually see the Emperor himself in person. My oh my. Thank you. That's uh... Two out of eleven electric counts I've seen, at least. <laughs> hey, Thend. Mm -hmm. Roll me a very hard perception test. Mm hmm. Darn this sickness. Okay. Nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, do you want to use the fortune point or keep it? Nah, nah, I'll, I'll keep it. I don't think I'll be passing this one. All right. Um, uh, as, uh, as you are listening to your companions talk and you are judging for yourself whether the emperor is even remotely impressive or just another manling, um, a, uh, a man bumps into you um, and he just kind of goes, sorry. Before continuing on his way, I'll keep uh, looking at the emperor. I guess the emperor's long gone. Ah, okay. How uh, how long is the parade? Uh, it is our. It, it wasn't like crazy long. It was mostly just um, the emperor's personal like honor guard on both sides of him. Um, but it has already, like, nobody was willing to move at all until him and the entire parade had moved out of sight. Mm. These, uh, these streets are getting a little bit too busy, even for my liking. I feel like we could, should... Could one of us counter perception roll to see if we see the gentleman bump into Thend? Uh, tell you what. Um, each of you can roll me a... Um, roll me a hard perception check. Everyone can roll this. Ugh. Oh, how are you doing recovering from fatigue conditions? Is it just one a night or multiple in it for a nice expensive room? Uh, since you slept in a private room and you got a full night's sleep, you're fine. Hey, oh my god, roll 20, and up with the 82s. We literally went A1, A2, A2. I will note, we are coming up to the end of the session, so if you want to blow your fortune points, now is not a bad time. Sure. Yeah, I'll do that. Sure. And then I guess for Ben's sake, whatever poison dagger he's been stabbed with, I will use my only fortune <laughs> point. I can assure you he has not been stabbed. Ooh, North Andrew, that was very close. Oh, I forgot to make it hard. That's why. Oh, okay. <laughs> Man. No. Nobody's nobody's rolling hot today. Rob's like, that was the goddamn motherfucking emperor. Uh, Sigmund, are you re-rolling or are you not going to bother? I did re-roll. I still rolled bad. 64. I mean, 8. Oh, okay. I see. Um, you sure right. you don't want to spend a fortune point then? Because, like, like GM said, it is the end of the session. Well, well. So, for Thin... <laughs> Uh, for Thend, uh, I am going to say, uh, let me look at your sheet real quick. Boop. Um, 
Oh, I didn't know you had luck. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. So then always remember, um, at the start of sessions, you refill your fortune points. And since you have luck, you always have one more fortune point than your max. So you have four fortune points at the start of every session. I think my fate is two, so it should be three. Okay. Um... That being said, roll me now a average in, uh, I want into it. Yeah. Roll me an average in intuition. Hey, there we go. All right. Then, um, that man that bumped into you and walked past you and is already kind of fading into the crowd. You get a really sudden feeling of wait a moment because everyone else is doing a pretty good job of avoiding you uh, as if almost they have like at least a little bit of respect or at least a little bit of fear when it comes to bumping into dwarves, probably due to prior experience. And as you reach up and you feel uh, your coin pouch, you realize you don't have a coin pouch now. I'll just uh, let out a sigh and start tailing the guy <laughs> all right all right then where are you going looks like uh just catching a pickpocket a pickpocket he stole your coin pouch uh it seems so i'm going to start running yeah so you're coming to sigmund mm-hmm oh uh, we're just little like job <laughs> oh me and Sigmund are going to start high tailing it for All this. Right, everyone this, that is okay. chasing the pickpocket, roll a challenging athletics test. Uh, who was it? Gorthon will ask because he needs to know who he's chasing. Oh, uh, that's it. As uh, you can point him out. As, as I'm heading out, uh, oh. one uh, one that bumped into me earlier gonna use another point you say that cause... man in the brownish green tunic he's bald <laughs> oh, no. wow come on man all right so I'm also using everyone failed astroth failed the re-roll sigmund failed the re-roll re um dorothandrel has no more re-rolls I'll, uh, I'll give it a re-roll okay Oh, y'all not, are not feeling. You're feeling hard. Yeah, if I didn't have the sickness, I would have passed the first one. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> oh, no. oh no, Fend. Again. <laughs> oh, Fend. Um. By the way, Fend, where were you keeping that ring you looted? Did you keep that in your coin pouch, or did you keep that in a separate pocket? I think uh i don't think i have any other carrying things so probably coin pouch well presumably you can always it's presumed you probably have extra pockets i don't think i trust it in the extra pockets okay so there, it was in the coin uh, pouch. Like bowl for it. uh that's up to you if, if you feel thin would have put it in the coin pouch then it's in the coin pouch but if you're like i think it makes sense for it to be in the pouch okay that's uh that's the safest place for it all right um so uh unfortunately uh, as the thief becomes very clearly aware uh, of uh, Thind gesturing in his direction and shouting, he takes off running, uh, as do all of you. I uh, can, you can re-roll a re-roll. Like, if I have one more fate point, I can, or fortune point, I can use it, right? You may not. Uh, no, you so cannot, it's just one. You cannot okay. re-roll a re-roll uh, unless there okay. is a, unless there is a, um dark deal a dark deal which uh um i will not be offering at this moment however uh thind as you take off running um just there are so many people in your way and although you are um trying to barge them out of the way you are fairly unsuccessful to the extent that unfortunately you basically glance off somebody your shoulder hits their shoulder and you kind of stumble and roll me a d3 okay just end oh, i thought it was sigmund 
Oh, sorry. I was describing Thend. I don't know. Uh, all right. Thend, uh, as you start to go down, uh, you hit the ground hard and you roll and you slam into Sigmund. And both of you go down in a tangle of limbs. Y'all are out of the race. Um, Dorthandril and Astaroth, you may both roll me one more challenging athletic check. Come on, roll 20. Let's go. <laughs> let's, go. let's go! Let's go! Oh! <laughs> How badly did you fail the first one? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Uh, oh no! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Darth Andrew goes down. Uh, he he uh, he stumbles. A, a, a man spills a set of packages, and Darth Andrew unfortunately steps into one of them. His foot smashes through uh, the cloth lid, and he just completely slips and falls. Luckily, doesn't cause any severe damage to himself. Um, Astaroth, you're gaining on the man, but it looks like he is about to fade into the crowd. You're going to need to roll me one more athletic check. Come on, roll 20. Come on. Ah. I... Do you have any more fortune points? I have one more. All right. And... I don't want my friend's money to go to go to waste. Oh my god, I hate this. You hear the whispers of rage in your mind. This man stole from your friend. You should catch this man. You should catch up to him and you should teach him to respect others' properties. Do you wish to give in to the whispers? No. All right. No. I... You you allow rationality to take over. It's just money. Life will carry on. And the man vanishes into the crowd. Then all of your money has is gone. And the ring has also vanished. Mm. Which may actually have some very interesting implications. <laughs> Look at this. We, we didn't rob those bodies. We've got no evidence of that. See? Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Son of a bitch. I'm sorry, Finn. I feel bad. I tried. <laughs> it's just it's just money. Honestly, I've I've dealt with these folk too many times to count. I don't mind. All right. Uh there are plenty of inns, uh if y'all want to find one to stay in. If you want to aim for the cheapest one, uh, everyone can either one of you being supported by the others or individually can roll me an average gossip check to try and find uh, the cheapest in. Oh, I've got a 40 in gossip. I have 37. I but I can assist someone. I guess I'm making... I'm making the roll with you two assisting. Uh, Thind, are you trained in gossip? Uh, I am not. Okay, so yeah, so you'll so you'll roll an average gossip check, but you will get an additional plus twenty for the target number. Okay, so only a plus ten because I'm sick. Okay. Good God. Uh, Can I spend my one fortune that's left to just make it a success? That is, yes, you may. Uh, and with okay. that, uh, you are able to ask around and you get some feedback uh, from various folks who tell you, uh, no, you should go to the Cat's Gut Inn. No, you should go to the Beastman's Horns. No, you should go to uh, the Emperor's Shield. No, you should. And eventually, uh, you do um, wind up at an end uh at the uh called uh, the lion's claw which thankfully uh does actually have fairly cheap uh it, it's mostly just a common room it does have some private rooms but it's uh uh it the the rates are 
um, a little mix. For the private rooms, uh, it actually runs for 12 silver for private rooms just because Altdorf is so bustling and busy. However, the common room uh, hangs around uh, a rate of only eight brass per person. Or we think we want to hold up for the night. Yeah. There's still some hours in the All day. Y'all right. could get some like light shopping done or go uh, like if, uh, for instance, Dorthandril wants to try and go by the uh, Imperial Post Office to so he can draft a letter to send out or then can go see a blacksmith or y'all can shop for any items. Like if y'all have got enough money, you can literally shop for anything you want. I don't think any of us have enough money. <laughs> Is there a... Uh chapter house of the Knights Panther here? Oh, yeah. An Altdorf? Oh. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, then I definitely... I I want to stop there. Um, then uh, I'll, I'll turn to Thend and say, Thend, um, we can still go to the blacksmith and get that armor done for you. I'll front the cost and uh, you can pay me back in due time. I'm, I'm not worried about it. Uh, we, we can discuss this in the morning. Uh, I think I have a plan. So be it. Um, I do believe we should all stick together, though. Just in case something like that happens again. I don't think splitting up is a good idea. Un I mean, unless you anybody has objections to that. But I think unless staying is... At the end. Yeah, unless you're staying at the end. But I don't think in just with how huge and vast and populated the city is that we should split up. Everyone okay with that, or...? Sure. I wonder how far away the elf quarter is. Uh, from where you're at in the conic plots, uh, it's not terribly distant. Where would we like to stop first? Well, I do need to see someone before we leave Altdorf. Okay. Well, let's get Ben's armor started so that it can just. They might need some time to work on it. Get that started as quickly as possible. Then let us go. I see no reason to waste daylight. I agree. It, uh, what's that? I gotta head out soon. Yeah, no, uh, I think this is a perfectly fine place to stop. Uh, so we, uh, y'all have set up in the Lion's Claw Inn, and you're about to go back out uh, before evening really gets, though uh, the city, this city, unlike most, or uh, other places you've been the Empire, comes even more alive at night in some ways. Um, and <coughs> we will handle y'all's errands around the city next time. All right, great job, yeah. gentlemen. Uh, yeah, thank you. Experience, everybody gets. See, y'all actually accomplished. Y'all actually finished this little section. Uh, let's see. All right, you are each going to get 115 experience for this session. It's a very specific number. Well, that's because you accomplished some very specific side objectives. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I had a great time as always guys I, I look forward to this every week thank you uh, are there any questions from anybody before we wrap up uh, uh, yes you did say because I advanced uh, my class I don't know if there's something specific you oh, have for that uh, hold on let me see Sigmund alright so what you're going to do is if you are sure that you have okay so just actually I, I do want to go over this real quick with that, that since you're all in here so when y'all are ready to leave your current class um you have so here's the thing to finish your class you need to have at least uh five advances in um every characteristic that's the like the bluish gray color um, for your characteristic advances. You also need to have at least five advances in eight of your skills. 
and you need to have at least one advance in one of your talents. Once you have done yep. that, you may level up to a new career. And your options are that you can spend 100 XP to level up um, to level two, um, or you could spend 100 XP to change to another career that is in your um, that is in cool. your class, um, and or you could spend 200 XP to just change to any career. Um, however, um, in order to change to a new career, you have to have every single one of the mentioned trappings. So if it tells you like you have to have a hand weapon, a sleeved mail shirt, and a horse, then you need to own all of those things in order to advance to that career, um, whether you're leveling up or moving to a different career. Um, however, the only other thing I really want to note is that when leveling up careers, one big thing to consider is that your talents, you can level up talents as many times as you want while you are in that level once you advance to the next level you cannot take any more points in the talents from the first level so if there is a talent that like you don't have any points in and you want to get a point in it you need to do that before you go to level two um, because you cannot take any level one talents or put additional levels in any level one talents once you've gone to level two However, you can continue to put points in your older skills and your older characteristics, as well as it giving you access to the new skills in your level two and to the bronze characteristic on your uh, characteristic advancements. Hopefully that makes sense. And all you have to do is when you go to level two, um, on the right hand side, um, instead of experience rewards, there's experience spins and you would just hit the plus and say, um, love, you just say like level leveling up to watchmen in it, for instance. And then when how much XP it costs, you type in a hundred and then, uh, you, there's a little red button that says switch and you would click on that and it'll move you to that and you're, you're done. That's all you gotta do. Sweet. And that's it. I am all set. All right, cool.